Greetings, friend. I will teach you everything you need to know about the advanced Sudoku technique called by value universal grave plus two, also known as bug plus two. I'll cover all the relevant definitions and conditions. I'll tell you what makes this situation different from a bug plus one. And most importantly, I'll give you one key fact you need to know before you apply this technique. Click below for the puzzle link. And with that, it's solving time. So our example is from the Sudoku Players Forum. And to get to this situation in the puzzle, I will warn you, you do need some advanced strategies. You're going to need at least do a swordfish. And if you happen to know anything about set equivalence theory, you might notice that there's a fistum of fell ring situation that you can apply using this ring and then these outer four. But you don't have to have that. Regardless, you get to this situation. And what you may see is that you have all by value cells in this puzzle except for these two that are colored okay and so what this we have is called a bug plus two situation and we're going to be able to solve that for you and in order to fully understand what bug plus two is i do need to review bug plus one with you so bug stands for by value universal grave it's a way to solve a whole bunch of by value cells so bug plus one is a technique where you solve a grid where every unsol unsolved cell has two possible cans except for one. So in this situation, if this was not an eight, then what you'd see is we'd have a bug plus one situation. And the red cell is the only one with three cans. You can solve it pretty quickly by knowing that the seven appears three times in the block, three times in the column, and three times in the row so whatever can appears three times you plug it right there and you'll be able to solve the rest of the puzzle if the puzzle has a unique solution you can use this right because what you're trying to avoid is a deadly pattern so if this was not a seven and you had all by value cells you could plug in you know one of these digits the eight solve every single cell in the puzzle and then come back and put a nine in there and every single cell would solve again for the other possibility in those cells and so you have two solutions to the puzzle and that is a deadly trap so we avoid the deadly trap by being able to solve for the digit in this case a seven that will break that deadly pattern and give you one unique solution so you do need to know that the puzzle is a unique solution and if you're new to the channel i welcome you to smart hobbies subscribe if you want to turn your passing interest in sudoku into a fun and enjoyable hobby in today's puzzle, we actually have two cells that have three candidates. So a bug plus two, it by definition, is pretty similar to a bug plus one. You have two cells now that have three possible candidates. All other unsolved cells have two possible candidates, and the puzzle has a unique solution. But there's a key difference in how you solve a bug plus two versus a bug plus one. I'm about to show you that. You cannot just plug in a seven here and an eight right here and the puzzle will solve that is not necessarily the case with a bug plus two in fact you get a little bit less limited information and most times you even if you plug that cane in there you may not easily solve the puzzle instead what you'll know is there's three different possibilities now possibility one is that a seven is in the red cell possibility two is that an eight is in the green cell and then possibility three is that the seven is there and the eight is there. So it can be either the seven is there and the eight doesn't have to be in the green, or the eight's here and the seven doesn't have to be in the red, or both of them are true. Okay, so what we can do, and we know that that's the situation because without the seven or the eight, you end up with the deadly pattern. All right, so what we do is you can use that knowledge to make some deductions. And so it's not as quick as a solve. And you could actually go in here, you could plug in a seven here, see if the puzzle solves, plug in an eight here, see if the puzzle solves, maybe plug in both and see if it solves. That is not the easiest way to do that. In fact, it's not really that logical or fun to solve that way. Instead, since this is a seven, or this is an eight, or both is true. We know if seven's there, this can never be a seven, right? Because either that's a seven, and I would eliminate a seven from this cell, or 
it's not a seven, this has to be an eight, right? Conversely, we know that this cell cannot be an eight because either the eight is in this cell and that wouldn't be an eight, the eight's not here, you know, the seven has to at least be there. So those are the type of deductions we can make. And if the two, three candidate cells are in the same block, you will be able to make some pretty good deductions. And what you might notice is something actually happens here. Since you have a seven, nine here, that would force a two right here and an eight right there in this cell. Okay. And then if we go back to here and you notice that this is a one eight naked pair now, that would force a two right here and an eight right there. Hopefully you notice that in both situations, this cell has to be an eight, right? Either the seven there or the eight there, or if both, this cell is an eight. So you can use that information to actually do some more solving. So you know this always has to be an eight. We can see where this takes us and whether this is the seven, this is the eight, or if both are true. So putting an eight right here, what can you do solve wise? Nine, eight, nine right there, okay. And then a nine. Seven, two, eight right there. All right, looking good. Eight here, two there. Okay, with this eight and the seven, nine, you know, that's going to be a two. That's going to be a seven. All right, and you got seven right here. And then keep going on. That's going to be a two, nine, seven right there. That's a one. That's a nine. That's an eight. That's a two. All righty. And then with this eight, that's a one. You might notice now this is an eight, okay? And then with this seven, that's a nine. And now our red cell is a seven. So what you see is actually that both are true in this situation. This is a seven and this is an eight. And we can continue to solve the rest of the puzzle. So that's a nine, that's a seven, that's a one. And our last digit is an eight. Now challenge yourself to learn a new strategy in this next tutorial. Thank you so much for watching.